Hey everybody, Nick here, and I got a quick note for you today about uh, something pretty exciting to me, and that's Blade Show 2019. So, um, as many of you may know, Blade Show is the uh, major, at least here in the U.S., it is sort of the major trade show for the cutlery, uh, the, the cutlery world. This can be, uh, you know, kitchen knives, uh, that, that outdoor knives, tactical knives, uh, all kinds of crazy stuff, as well as custom knives, art knives. Just the, the, the whole cutlery world is kind of the converging in Atlanta, Georgia, for Blade Show 2019. There in June, I think it's 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, and I am absolutely going to be going. Um, it is a wonderful thing. I'm like a kid in the freaking candy store. I was there in 2017. Couldn't make it last year due to some work stuff. But uh, this year, I, I'm uh, barring, you know, personal tragedy or work tragedy, I'm going to try and be there. I mean, the plane tickets are there. So I figured I'd share a couple of hopes, a couple of dreams, a couple of desires for things that uh, go on this year. Um, to me, there, there are only two things I really am hoping are different this year. One of the big ones is last time I saw a lot of knife safety issues. You know, people, and this was in various things, you know, people walking around in, because this, this is a big crowded convention hall, people walking around the crowded room with an open unsheathed flicks, fixed blade. That's not freaking safe. I'm sorry. So you please, please, please practice knife safety. Or similarly, you'll see people, you know, handling something at a table, they turn around to show it to a friend and they damn near stab the person who's standing next to him, who sidled up next to him at the table. No, this is serious business. I mean, uh, remember all your knife safety rules and remember them times 20 because there were so many damn people around. And I'm sorry, Balasong people, for the love of God, the last thing you should be flipping, the last time you should be flipping a Balasong is while walking through a group of people. On three different occasions, I saw some freaking Bally boy drop a Balasong in the middle of an acrobatic toss as they're walking through a crowd. It never once hit somebody, but it came too damn close on a couple of occasions. So please, people, be safe safe. Don't, it, the, 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 be careful, uh, remember where your blades point. I mean, basic knife safety rules, and for the love of God, if you gotta flip something, flip a trainer while you're walking through crowds. So, that, that, that's a big one. I just, I worry that someone's gonna get bad hurt, and then we're gonna have stupid rules, like you can only have unsheathed knives at counters, and then, you know, zip ties on handles, and stupid things like that. So, I really, really hope that the safety thing is gonna be dialed up a little bit, because that was a big concern last time for me. The other issue that was a big concern were the empty tables. It happened to be the case that I noticed a number of makers sold out very, very quickly on the very first day. Now, look, at some level, I get that's a wonderful thing for the maker. That means they came with a bunch of knives and they sold them all, so they're going home a whole lot more wealthy. That's that's great. Um, and in some cases, it's amazing because a bunch of fans got things. In other cases, it's really ugly because a bunch of dealers got things and they're going to repost them the next day at twice the table price. That sucks. We should discourage that. But nevertheless, um, I know it's a good thing for makers. However, it's really frustrating for me if on you know Saturday or on Sunday, I'm sitting there and I walk up to your table. I'm super excited. Like, wow, I can't, I've been seeing your stuff on Instagram. I can't wait to handle it. You're like, oh, sorry, I sold it all on Friday. And you're sitting there, you know, twiddling your freaking thumbs. No, that doesn't work for me. Um, that's a big problem. And, and But luckily, a bunch of makers had solved that last time, doing things like lotteries that trigger on the very last day of the, se or, uh, of the show. That way, you know, they've always got a piece on the table. Or maybe they bring a personal knife and some knives, head knives headed in for spa service. Maybe they keep some knives on the table that have already sold with, you know, big tags that say this is sold, but it'll be picked up on Sunday. A couple of people had that. You know, if you buy this, you're picking it up Sunday. If that's cool, then great, buy it. Otherwise, no problem. Or some makers just kept, you know, one of each of their models in reserve. That way, at the very least, they, they would sell it on the last day. But there was always something there for me to check out. <clears throat> Pardon me. But either way, um, it's really frustrating to walk up to an empty table was really, really tough for me. Because let's face it, if I'm flying halfway across the country to check out your work, and I can't check out your work... Honestly, that's pretty bad, right? I mean, that, that you can picture my frustration as a reviewer, but also as a fan. If I've seen your stuff, I've been lusting, lusting after your stuff, and I, I never actually get a chance to see it just because, I don't know. So I really, really hope that more makers are going to plan things a little bit more carefully, have stuff in reserve for every day of the show, etc., so that it's actually going to be a good experience, even on Sunday morning when a lot of stuff has already been sold. So that's one. Th those are the two big things I'd actually like to change, um, is the, the, the safety stuff, which, again, I think was just a few really stupid people, but it's a, a few bad apples can spoil the bunch, so to speak, or stab the bunch, as the case may be. And empty tables were a big problem, but luckily... I I think there were a lot of good strategies for makers to avoid those. 
There were lots of things I'm looking forward to, though. I mean, for me, uh, checking out the gear is going to be a big thing. I mean, I'm going to be a gem hunter there. My biggest goal, my fondest desire for Blade is that I will go up to somebody's table that I've never even heard of, or I've only marginally heard of, and I'll handle their stuff, and it's just going to be like, oh my god, this is amazing. And then I will get to, you know, potentially buy one down the road, or maybe even buy one right there. I'm totally game for that. Um, if it's, you know, reasonable for me to do so, you know, if I can get in the lottery or whatnot. But anyways, then I will find something absolutely amazing that nobody knows about and then tell people about it. That would be the very best outcome for this, is to discover hidden gems and, you know, give those people the, the recognition that they deserve, as well as potentially find something great for my collection. I'll take both of those things. So I will be there in large part to search out gems, but more importantly to me is the people. Um, the, the Blade Show is, yeah, sure, it's a place to see a lot of knives. That's great. And being able to wander up to a production table, by the way, you know, like a, a major company might have their table, and it's like, I get to handle everything that I want to handle there. So I can just be like, this model's great. This is great. I'm checking this out. I'm checking this out. Oh, nope, nope, no, 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 no. Okay, this one's good. Oh, this is going to be a gem. It just makes it a lot more efficient than, for instance, you know, buying all of those things. It just allows me to sort through things in a really great way. But the more important thing for me is the people. You know, it's great to be able to actually meet some of the people I admire in the game. You know, in 2017, I got to shake Sal Gless's hand. I got to shake Rick Hinder's hand. I got to meet a bunch. I got to meet Martin Fish. I'm trying, Martin. I'm really trying here. But anyways, I got to meet a bunch of these people whose work I've admired for a long time. Now it's like, hey, you're the human who does that. That's amazing. Got to meet Brian the Doe, uh, who's the guy who made, by the way, Two Your Knives Hive, Brian the Doe, Shot by Design, uh, Typhoon Evo, and Cricket Seismic. But I got to meet all these folks, and that's, that's just amazing amazing. That's great. And plus, there are going to be a bunch of friends there. I mean, a bunch of YouTubes are going to be there. I believe Frankie and Bird, Birdshot IV, Dr. Frunky, the folks from Knife Nuts Podcast, just a ton of freaking people are all going to be there, and it's, it's going to be great. So I'm looking forward to meeting a lot of folks there, and that's one of the big things I'm there for, too. Um, One common question, finally, uh, I'll address a common question, which is the logistics. You know, people are always asking me, Nick, oh my God, people are going to see your face. Now, look, this is true. I do keep a pretty solid separation between my professional and my social media lives. I'm a research scientist, and so, you know, it's not necessarily the same thing as a knife reviewer in my daily life, right? So, my employer and co-workers don't actually care, but it is something that could definitely be a distraction, and it's not a distraction I need in my life. Um, You know, you never know when a potential collaborator might be a Z Hunter fan, right? Oh, God, I hope not. That it might even be a deal break, but still. Um, this is part of the reason I take my privacy relatively seriously here. And so I'm probably going to be pretty low-key at Blade Show, but actually there's another reason for that. Um, I know that a lot of makers don't freaking know who I am. I'm, I'm well aware of this, so I don't want this to come across as I'm a big deal. And, uh, only maybe for a very small audience, but still. Um, I don't want to be treated any differently because I am Nick Shabazz as I'm wandering around to different tables. If somebody doesn't know who I am, I'm sure as heck not going to introduce myself. And frankly, I'm probably not going to introduce myself in general because uh, for a couple of reasons. To start with, if a maker is going to be a dick to somebody, because I've had a couple of occasions where makers have been mean to everybody else but me and that always bothers me because it's like that special treatment and I'm getting in I'm getting bad information basically so if a maker is going to be a pain I want them to be a pain to me so I know it's like okay you suck as a human that's good to know file that one away so I don't want makers to be on their best behavior or something like that but more importantly especially for new makers who are just getting started. I don't want my showing up at your table to handle your stuff to feel like a shakedown or a final examination. I know a lot of makers might feel some pressure, especially when they've got somebody with a little bit of an audience to say, oh, here, take this, take this, take this. You know, they'll do a review on it. I don't want that because it's not fair to small makers to take their product without any kind of compensation. That's that's really ugly. Or, for instance, I don't want to be in that situation of like, well, this is up for a lotto, but I can make you win the lotto. That That's ugly completely separately and independently, but still, that's not something I want. So I feel like being low-key is going to be much better for me in being the gem hunter. Um, so I, you know, my goal here is to wander around and not make a big deal about it. Just kind of be there as another attendee. I think that'll work best for me. Um, I know, though, that for some people, there's going to be a game here, you know, spot the jackass in the crowd, that kind of thing. And you know what? At some level, it's kind of heartwarming to me. I mean, and I guess... <laughs> You should find better people. It's like, look for Stan Wilson. He's actually worth a damn. But still, um, you know, <laughs> Elisha, I should hunt him down. But nevertheless, um, you know, okay, whatever, have fun. But I do ask a couple of things. I mean, to start with, you know, 
look, be sure. Uh, you can say hello if, you, if you'd like. I mean, I would probably prefer that you just smile knowingly. Hey, you spotted a jackass. You hear my voice in the crowd. Hey, I spotted a jackass and move on. But you can stop and say hello. I'm on there on a mission to hunt gems, but... I am happy to shake your hand, but please make sure that you're sure. Don't accuse a random person of something ho so horrible as being Nick Shabazz. That's kind of an ugly thing to say about somebody, right? Um, and so, please, please be careful. I don't want some poor random jackass with smaller hands and a fancy watch to walk around the show and just get constantly harassed. That's an ugly thing. Um, I also ask that you keep it low-key if you are saying hi. I mean, if you're, oh my god, are you Nick Shabazz? Then that's... The answer will always be no. <laughs> I mean, I, I and remember, I'm trying to keep it low-key. I'm trying to avoid any weird special treatment situations. And just please show me the respect. Re please do respect my privacy. You know, don't take pictures. It, it, but I, I hope that that's not a, something I have to say. You know, of course, don't, you know, interrupt me if I'm talking to other people. Be kind, etc. I mean, you're welcome to do it. <laughs> hey, you're, you're Nick Shabazz, and I hate your opinion on flipper tabs. Pocket backers are amazing. Okay, have fun. But, you know, remember, I am a fellow human, and I'm they're trying to enjoy the show too. But again, like I said, this is like, I'm pretending I'm a way bigger deal than I actually am there, but I've had enough people asking how I'm going to do this, that that's a question. There is a chance, and I'm, I'm, I am hoping to try and arrange something a little bit more public, maybe on the Sunday or something like that, you know, <laughs> where the Dark Knight can show up and actually meet people in a, a more meaningful way. I'm hoping something like that could happen, but you know, there, there, there were a lot of logistics involved with that. I can't make any guarantees. And I will announce that quite clearly if that is going to be a thing. But nevertheless, I'm going to be there, but I'm going to be low-key for a variety of reasons, and most of which just related to I think it'll make the experience better for the channel and, frankly, for the makers I'm talking to. So, um, anyways, there you go. That's Blade. I am super, super excited about it. I have my hopes. I hope that the safety is going to be paramount among attendees, and I really do hope that makers are going to keep stuff on their table because I want to find gems, and if you sold all your gems, I can't find them. Um, I'm hoping very much to see some great gear, to find some amazing stuff. I know I'm going to meet some amazing people there and see some amazing people who I've already met before. And I'm hoping very much that my fans will respect both my privacy and my desires of how to do this well for the channel um, and keep it low-key, just as I'm trying to keep it low-key, too. Keep an eye out on Instagram and here. If, uh, if something else, you know, comes up that's more public, I'll let you guys know. But for the most part... I think this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm super excited about it. I hope that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. And if you get the Blade Show, I can't wait to uh, meet you there in a low-key sort of way. <laughs> have a wonderful rest of your day, everybody. Bye now.